Well, good morning, what's drop? You know, it's always interesting to me the way that people have certain mindsets. You know, they kind of take their mind and they go, uh, I only see this. Because they choose to put on the little blinders so that they can only see what's right in front of them. Things like going to work, having breakfast, putting on their pants, washing their face, shaving, you know, kind of shaving. Kind of like, you know, doing them so you don't stink, you know. Everyone has their own routine and they have their own idea of what life is all about. So they go about their day eating, drinking, giving in marriage, and doing what they think God wants them to do. They will occupy, as the word is used, till he comes. Because they don't want to talk about, you know, Jesus coming now. They don't want to talk about the end of the world being this generation. They don't want to think about, maybe, you know, like Noah, I better get ready. Hey, I, I don't want that kind of stuff. I just want a nice, smooth church, you know. It's like, hey, I finally got my act together. You know, I've grown up, and now I just want a church where I can just go and, you know, do my spiritual thing. And then I can go home, you know, and I can watch football, basketball, baseball. Or be a part of a, you know, maybe a soccer team, or you know, have kids and watch my kids play in sports, or maybe I can take them hunting and teach them how to shoot and kill something. After all, I mean that's the way of the world, isn't it? Eat, drink, and be merry. I mean, or eat and drink and stand up for righteousness and do the the right thing, you know, because we're part of the church. Hey, we're strong. We belong. I don't know about you, but I came from a weird time in, you know, the world. I came from the Jesus movement and the hippie movement. You know, we kind of looked at society and we said, uh, excuse me? No, 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 no. And then a lot of hippies went right into society and said, give me the money. And they became part of the problem. Because they became yuppies and got involved in that kind of money-making enterprise that we call democracy, capitalism, freedom of rights, freedom of own guns, bill of rights, privileges, special dispensation, the exceptionalism of America. Now, I don't know about you, but I heard all that back in the 60s. And we rejected it. We said, uh-uh, that's just a bunch of hogwash. Now, it's come back. But it's coming from Christians saying that. And I'm fascinated because it's like, well, been there, done that, sorry. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God, righteousness, and you know, all these things be added on you. But don't get yourself caught up or caught in the world in its way. Because you don't know what you're doing when you get involved in the mud and the blood of what's going on in the world. When you sign up to the polite solution, when you own up to the commitments you're making allegiance to, when you swear yourself by God and country, you got to live it. Jesus said it. If you're going to swear by you know, your flag, you're going to pledge allegiance to that flag. You're going to go with that flag. You'll probably be left behind because you've sworn allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Jesus said, swear by nobody. Now, why would he say something like that? Why would Jesus go out of his way to warn you not to swear allegiance and then you go and do it anyway? Do you think there's a lesson that you're going to learn? I mean, salvation is fine. You'll be saved. But... Nobody is promised to be spared the Great Tribulation. Oh, one church is told that, you know, if you prepare yourself, you know, then be ready because, guess what? I'll spare you the hour of temptation to come upon the whole world. But one out of seven isn't good odds. 
So I'm kind of interested is that the mindset of American Christian is that I, I don't deal with rapture. I don't deal with the end of the world. I just like my comfortable life. I watch TV. I go to work. I'm a good person. You know, I do my tithing. I do my Christian work. Hey, I'm even in the ministry. That's nice. <laughs> and it's nice. Uh, you know, it is. But you know, I'm not called to those that are fine. I'm not sent to those that are doing okay. I'm not even really here to prepare you to go into Great Tribulation because most of you will. I'm here to warn you that, you know, hey, you know, you do this, you get this. Jesus always gave it pretty clear. He kind of like took a scale and said, look, God's scales aren't like this, you know, and just because you think you're here doesn't mean you're really right here. If anything, God's scales are just. He causes the sun to shine, the rain to fall, circumstances of life to come upon us all. Now the way he says it is that he causes the sun to shine, the rain to fall, the wicked and the good. Which means everybody gets it. Do you got it? But he also said that if you would do those things that I said, you'd be prepared for them. To prepare ye the way of the Lord, Jesus said, look, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, everyone's going to say, well, didn't I do all these things for you? Didn't I prophesy and have a ministry and do the church and be this and be that? And God will say, uh, yeah, you did. Wonderful works. I don't know you. How could he make that kind of statement? How could he use that kind of phraseology? It seems to be, if you read the scripture, indicative of what you did, not what you said. In other words, if you clothe the naked, if you helped the helpless, if you loved the unlovable, if you fed the hungry, no matter who they were, that meant your enemy. Ooh, what does that do to the military? Well, if I pledge allegiance, it kind of puts me in conflict with, I swear my heart. But I've given my heart to Jesus. So do I pledge allegiance? Or do I give my life as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. If I clothe the naked, do I go out and buy, you know, six pairs of shoes? You know, seven coats, five shirts, four pants, and have you know, a nice suit? When we do know that, you know, there are people that, quite frankly, you know, might be down the street even naked. Well, I donate my old clothes. Good. I'm happy. Praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. His mercy endures forever. But you know, when you go and say about visiting in prison, you don't want to deal with ex-cons, do you? You don't want to deal with, like, that other community. You don't want to deal with the Democrats or the Republicans or the Libertarians. You don't want to deal with people that don't go along with your program. You don't want to deal with people that have had an abortion, after all. I mean, God knows I've witnessed to them and they haven't accepted it, so now they're out of the question. Push them away. Or, God knows, we don't want to talk to one of those doctors or nurses that work in one of those clinics. Push them away. We don't even want to deal with, you know, oh no, you know, the homosexual question. Oh, push them away. God knows, you know, that there's also those cults out there and we're going to push them away. What is your purpose for life? What are you to be about? Is it really about you getting your children? You getting your job? You getting your wife? You getting your life? I think Jesus said that if you love these things more than you love me, you're not worthy to be my disciple. So go away. I don't know you. Ooh. Imagine that. As a word for Woods Cross. As a word for you and I. Imagine if God was saying that today, instead of 
way back then. Watch, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man comes. Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that that day you come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, prosperity and God's will for my life God's plan he's got a plan for me then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but you brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief you shall and you are all children of the light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. If your pastor doesn't talk about Jesus coming, if your church doesn't know that we're living in the last days, there's no question about it. If you don't know by way of your ministry or being a part of a ministry that you have less than 10 years left, that you're not going to get out of this, generational thing, that you're going to see the tribulation come upon the world, the great tribulation that comes as a snare to the whole wide world, then I got a warning for you. Wake up. Because you're living in fantasy land. You've gone to Disneyland and you bought your ticket and guess what? Somebody sold you a bill of goods because you're on vacation and this isn't your home. you got work to do. Vacation will be later. This isn't the time. This isn't the place. And there are a lot of Christians that have taken their life and their ministry and taken the time to go on vacation, to go set aside what God had taken from them as far as dedication. And now, because of the delay, the Lord delays His coming, they've gotten back involved in the nation, in the politics, in the, you know, let's play with abortion as an issue. Let's play with, you know, the LGBT as an issue. Let's deal with these righteous causes. Let's don't save the world. Let's don't be about our Father's business. Let's don't deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow Jesus. Let's don't tell people, really, about being saved. Because God knows some of them we don't want saved. Wouldn't mind getting there myself, but, you know, don't want them saved. Lord, just hold off for a while. I got my football league to finish, my fantasy team, my other things that I've added to the gospel. I don't know, Jesus died, put it bluntly, and he died for the sins of the world, and he died for the person that you're not telling. So, I might suggest to you that maybe, just maybe, the word for Woods Cross today isn't so much about what you get, but what you give what you ought to be doing, not what you ought to be living. Because most people, if they're honest, live for themselves. Some way, shape, or form. They're selfish little, hard the expression, but bastards. Because a bastard is someone who's an illegitimate son or daughter. And if you're not sharing the gospel, you're illegitimate. If you're not doing what Jesus said as a witness and a testimony to his coming again, you are a bastard. Or worse, you know, an illegitimate child. You've been born out of this wedlock that God wanted you to be married to his son. Wanted you to be doing the things that Jesus said. Wanted you to be accomplishing the will of his father. That he came to tell you and to show you how to do like he did. So what are you doing today? Are you getting up? getting ready for work, getting in the car, heading down the road. 
that day shall come upon the world like a whole snare. That day should not take you by surprise, because it's living every day in the fullness and the expectancy that we have less than 10 years. Matter of fact, most of us think we have less than five years. I'm one of those. I'm pretty sure that we have you know, very few years left. If you're lucky, you'll keep going on without dying tomorrow or today. Because no man knows the day or the hour that he's going to die, much less the day or the hour that the Son of Man will return. If Jesus comes for you today, you could be hit by a car on the freeway. You could drop dead from a heart attack. You could have a cholesterol overload. You could have a, you know, one of those embolisms in your brain just pop loose, you know, suddenly, boom, boom, gone. Wake up. Hey, guess what? I didn't die. Oh, where am I? Heaven? Ooh, how long do I get to stay here before I'm cast out? Be aware. Make your calling and your election sure. Be sober-minded. This isn't the time to be getting. This is the time to be giving. This isn't the time to be letting. This is the time to be doing. And if you're not doing the will of the Father, which is in heaven, you don't love the world and you're not working on saving the world from sin, from hell, from those things that you were saved from, what do you do? What are you doing? 